So 2023, what a year it has been. What will 2024 bring for us as individuals, as families, but also as a church community? Now, for some of us, 2023 may not have gone exactly to plan. May not, not everything may have happened that you thought. I think Harriet kind of expected that her husband would be here by now. But we're still praying. Um, for some of us, it's been filled with joy beyond expectation. For some of us, it's been a year of sadness or disappointment. But as we reflect on this last day, I would like us to focus on what we can be grateful for. No matter how difficult it has been, there is always something to give thanks for. For me, I'll do a little bit of, because I'm going to get you to do a little challenge at the end of the service. So for me, what am I most grateful for? I am most grateful for my husband, who has probably been my biggest supporter and cheerer. Um, if you'd known me when I first met him, I was this quiet, shy, didn't say boo girl. But he's just always encouraged me to be bigger and better than what I can be and push me beyond things. I'm grateful for great friends that I have. Deb Baker, who has been such a good, a great, amazing support for me for so many years, always texts me, rings me to make sure that I'm doing okay. Lynette Tobin. My, I would say she's my mentor. She is somebody who has been an amazing strength to me. Um, hasn't always been had the easiest of times, especially with David being unwell and him passing. But, you know, I would ring Lynn to check on her and she's always like, how are you? What's happening? Tell me what's going on. So always like on the making sure that I'm okay. Got a couple of other friends, Leonie and Leanne. Um, my family, my children, I am so grateful to God for them that all of my children are in the house. They are still following Jesus. They have married great life partners and I am so grateful to God for that. We have always prayed for our children and their partners. So those of you who have got young kids, pray. Pray for your children's partners now and they will, you know, you'll just be amazed got three amazing in-laws, two daughter-in-laws and a son-in-law who are just love, who love my kids almost more than what I do. Um, I'm so grateful for my health. I've had some health issues, challenges this year. Still not 100%, but I'm just grateful that God has great, given me great doctors that can just help and help me to overcome Things. I'm grateful for this community of people. You know, we've got some amazing people. The Filipinos, I just want to give you guys a huge shout out. You are the most faithful, loyal, committed people I think that this church has. You're here every week. You're always on service. Nothing is too hard. And you do it with a smile. You know, you don't grumble, you don't complain. And I'm going to talk about that grumbling and complaining a little bit. Um, Budgie, one of the hardest working ladies that I know. You know, she runs businesses. She's, she's out. I don't think she's home any night. And then she turns up here every Sunday, every Sunday without fail. I don't think she's ever had a Sunday off. We try and give her a Sunday off, but she still comes. Dom Sneak, ever faithful, ever loyal. You are, I'm so grateful to God that you are, you are part of this church family. David and Claire, you know, like we have just got some amazing people in this church and I am so grateful to God that God has placed me here and God has, a couple of years ago, God said to me, a lot of people left, but God said to me, I want you to stay. This is your home. This is your family. This is my family as well. So I am so grateful to God. You know, Lynn Tobin once said to me, she said, how we leave is how we enter. So I want to leave 2023 
with a heart full of gratitude and praise and thankfulness because that's how I'm going to enter 2024. So my challenge to you at the end of the service will be, what are you most grateful for in 2023 that you're going to take into 2024? We're going to leave with gratitude and expectation. So let me, I jump, that's the end of my message, but I'm going to the start now. <laughs> All right. So 2023, the last day, 31st of December, it's a time for us to reflect on what has been, what was, what should have been done, all the things that we said we were going to do, but didn't do. Has anyone got things that they said they were going to do and didn't do? I know that I have lots of things. It's a time when we make New Year's resolutions that are usually broken by the end of January. You know, we've seen some videos this morning from our leaders and people of our church about what they're so grateful for. And we have a God who is so amazing in all that he does, so much that he cares about all the little things. Now, I want to use the word grateful rather than thankful because there's a difference between the two words. Thankfulness is a reaction. Thankfulness involves how we feel in the moment, and like all feelings, it eventually fades. Thankfulness is a temporary emotional response to a temporary circumstance. We're thankful for the gift that we got. We're not always grateful for it. We're thankful. We're thankful for the things that happen. Gratitude, or being grateful, unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, and confusion into clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past. It brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow. Gratitude is an attitude of appreciation under any circumstance. Gratitude involves being thankful, but it is more than that. Gratitude means expressing thankfulness and being appreciative of life daily, even when nothing exciting happens. Gratitude is about being content physically and mentally with the state of your life. You may not always be happy, but you can still practice gratitude. Although gratitude and thankfulness are closely related, gratitude provides you with a longer lasting feeling of satisfaction and improved well-being. And practicing gratitude is proven to offer many benefits. By choosing to cultivate gratitude in your life, you are actively improving your, you will actively improve your health and well-being. A recent study by the University of California suggests that gratitude may be associated with many benefits for individuals, including better physical and psychological health, increased happiness and life satisfaction, decreased materialism, and much more. Expressing gratitude is associated with a host of mental and physical benefits, and studies have shown that thankful that feeling thankful and grateful can improve sleep, mood, and immunity. Gratitude can decrease depression, anxiety, and difficulties with chronic pain and risk of disease. So if we're not grateful, what are we? Ungrateful? Complaining? Grumbling? Philippians 2 verses 14 says, Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. When we complain about things, does it help us? How do you feel after you complain? Do you feel better? Do you feel good? Do you feel happy? If you complain about the weather, does it change it? If you complain about, the, complain about the way you look, does it change the way you look? If you complain about your husband or your wife or your children or your job, 
does it change any of those things? We can look around and see what we don't have, but complaining is a total waste of time. And sometimes we are a little bit slow, we don't get it. Complaining is stewing without doing, it's worthless. Complaining will never make you feel better. God wants us to overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all that he has done. But you know something? Complaint is actually more natural for us than gratitude. Disfaction, dissatisfaction is more natural than contentment. You think about how many times they said something, said something to you. Charlie, you look so great. I love you wearing that. Da, da, da. You know, ten people might say it to you. But one person says something negative or grumbly about it, and what do you remember? What do you remember? Do you remember the good things? No, we remember the negative. So I want us to focus on gratitude. Scholars, spiritual leaders and scientists throughout history have deliberated on gratitude. More recently, the scientifically validated benefits of gratitude are now being better understood. Studies have shown that gratitude produces chemicals in your brain, dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin, that make you feel peaceful and happy. Take time, take time to be grateful for the things in your world. Being grateful can help reduce depression. It can give you a higher satisfaction with your life. It can improve social relationships and then your self-esteem. It can lessen anxiety. It can improve your health. It relieves stress. And it can cause psychological changes in your body that initiate the ner that damage the nervous system. It can help you improve your sleep. People with an attitude of gratitude tend to pursue goals that keep them feeling good. A positive attitude promotes positive action, and they usually achieve their goals more than those that don't. I had a quote, but I think I left it. I didn't bring it. No, I didn't put it in. You know, we as a church have got so much to be grateful for. I look around and I see what God has done in us and through us. You know, we just see here on a Sunday. We don't see Liberia. We don't see the Philippines. We don't see Sierra Leone. We don't see always see what we're doing in our community. But that's something that you are a part of, and that's something that we can be grateful for God in doing in us and through us. You know, in 2023, here are some stats for us as a church to make you realize just how good you are. Our average Sunday attendance at both campuses was 100 was 100 was 125 we had this year 10 water baptisms do you know many we had last year we didn't have any 10 water baptisms this year 70 percent of our church congregation are in a small group 70 percent of our church congregation serve in church as a church leader, that is something to be really grateful for. I'm grateful that, I have, that we have people that are committed to this house. We give to overseas missions. We are changing the lives of people overseas, in the Philippines, in Africa. Gratitude is transformational. It's not meant to keep you the same as you are. It's meant to transform. So my challenge 
Well, that, with those stats, that's, that's just a few things of what we've done. But you know what? We've still got so much more to do. There's still so much more. See the empty seats? There's still more. My challenge to you today, Rebecca and, and the ushers are just going to give you a slip of paper. I want you to take this slip of paper, and I want you not to rush this, but just take your time. And I want you to write down three things. I know you've some, some of you have probably got lots more than three, but three things that you are most grateful for right now. Can I get the musos to come? Yeah, sorry. Three things that you're most grateful for. It could be your family. It could be your job. It could be you get to be in Australia on holidays. It could be what you're thinking about is going to happen in 2024. Three things that you're most grateful for. But it doesn't stop there. Because this we're going to give thanks for, but it's what's going to carry you into 2024. We're going to leave 2023 with an attitude of gratitude. That God has been so good to us this year. And we've all got stories to tell. We've had incredible healings. Ben Chapman's daughter, Gabrielle, was healed. We've got our own miracle with Jean and Damien and Zoe. You know, how much, how amazing is that? That we've got, that God has done those what seemingly small things. And this is something that you can do at home every day. What are three things that you be, can be grateful for? Get it into the habit of every day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share three things. Find somebody they can share it with. Three things that I can be grateful for today. They say that if you do that every day, give thanks, be grateful for, for things every day. I think it's within five weeks you actually will see things start to change. <laughs> the music team are going to do it after. So write it down, take it home, stick it on your fridge. But practice gratitude. It doesn't stay on a piece of paper, people. This is something that comes from your heart, but it's an action. We start practicing. If you're grateful for somebody, tell them. Husbands, if you're so grateful for what your wife does, tell her. Children, if you're so grateful for what your mother does, tell her, your father. Friends, tell them. But do it today and then again tomorrow, and then the next day. Let's go into 2024 with that attitude of gratitude. And we know that beyond it all, beyond, behind it all is God. Because without Him, we have nothing and we are nothing. He is our source of strength. He is our source of hope. He is our source of grace. 